Well, you know, there's a little event going on this afternoon. I figured some of you have heard about it. You know, it's an annual event here in, in America. You know, that just that little sporting event known as the Super Bowl. How many of you are, are, are rooting for the Packers? Ray, we do have a few of you. How many are rooting for the Steelers? Oh, we have more. I really couldn't care less since my Falcons are out. But nevertheless, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a good time together today. You know, I, I came across something. It was in the, the Telegraph um, concerning some of the events that will be taking place as a result of the, the Super Bowl. Today, as a result of all of the events going on, Americans will consume one billion chicken wings. 14,500 tons of chips. Eight million pounds of guacamole. <laughs> and Solid Rock won't participate in this next one, but as a result of uh, the Super Bowl today, Americans will consume in beverage 325.5 million gallons of beer, and tomorrow we'll be having a healing service for those who are... Oh, it's going to be a good one today. I, um, I hope that your team wins. How is that for being diplomatic? <laughs> Will you turn in your Bibles, please, to Matthew chapter 16? I'm going to be talking to us this morning about knowing the signs of the times. And as you're turning there, I want to let you know of something that I'm going to be doing this Wednesday night in Cafe. Just this past week, I had the wonderful opportunity of being at a leadership conference with Christians United for Israel, Pastor John Hagee, and leaders from across America gathered together for our annual retreat, uh, planning, and focus. And Pastor Hagee shared a, a movie that has just been released on the, the real story behind what's going on in Iran. It's called Iranium. The, the broad press is not aware of this, and he gave us one of these. And this Wednesday night, I'm going to be sharing with you why Iran is an existential threat to the state of Israel, the Jewish people, and also to the Western world, especially America. Israel to I Iran is the little Satan. The United States is the great Satan. And if we ever allow Iran to have a nuclear weapon, they have sworn the destruction and the removal of Israel from the planet Earth. I believe that you will be challenged by this movie. I think that it will provoke you to pray and intercede and to become very aware of what's going on. So this Wednesday night, I'd like to invite you to come and join with us. It's, in fact, I can't remember a time when I've ever showed a, a movie during a service. But I wanted to get this in your hands because we are living in some very, very interesting times. Can you say amen? amen. Matthew chapter 16. For the next few weeks, Lord willing, I want to lay out for us a prophetic landscape of what will happen as we move towards the end time and we move specifically toward the, the battle of Armageddon. This world is moving with, with rapid speed towards the fulfillment of biblical prop prophecy. Those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ recognize that something is going on in our world that is just not quite right. But even the unbelieving world recognizes that we're in a time of geopolitical upheaval and unrest. And Jesus tells us that we can know the signs of the times. For believers, there's a genuine motive to want to, to discern what is God doing and where are we in terms of this prophetic timeline that we're in. In Matthew chapter 16... The Pharisees asked Jesus for a sign. The Bible says there in verse 1, it said that they tested Jesus. Simply meaning they did not have a pure motive. They wanted to entrap him. They wanted to give him a, a spiritual trap so that they could vilify him and really delegitimize Jesus. 
So in response of the Pharisees, knowing the signs of the time, Jesus tells them in verse 2, When evening comes, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, today, it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. Now just a few days ago, beloved, we were made aware of some upheaval that is going on in the Middle East, and especially in Egypt. Egypt was not the, the beginning point. It was part of a broader picture that is going on in terms of the upheaval and the oppress that is happening there in that broad Arab world. But I want to focus in for just a moment on Egypt because it's very critical to our understanding as children of God. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not just a geopolitical event. It is a part of a bigger picture as the spiritual pieces on the chessboard are being put into place in terms of our move towards the end of the age. Egypt is one major piece in the big prophetic puzzle. I think all of us recognize that we're living in perilous times. We feel it. We sense it. We watch it in the news. We see it in the newspapers and we see it on the, the internet. We are living in prophetic times and perilous times. But what is happening in the, the subterranean world of Egypt is not just a move towards democracy. Our media wants to give us the idea that, that democracy is on the march, that freedom's flag is being waved and unfurled in the Middle East. And though that might be nice for us to, to think, and, and it gives us the warm and fuzzy that democracy is, is rolling back the tides of communism and Islamism and fascism and jihadism, ladies and gentlemen, it's not really democracy that's on the rise in Egypt and the broader Arab world. It is really the rise of Islamicism. It is the rise of jihadism. Radical, militant Islamism that seeks to destroy the Western world. Lurking beneath all of that is something that is fascinating to watch and to behold. And I want to share with us why I'm concerned about it and why we as Christians ought to be concerned about it. The next few weeks, I'm going to talk about the prophetic signs the road signs that lead to the end of the age, ultimately in the battle of Armageddon. But it's important for us to understand what is going on in the Middle East today. Egypt is the largest Arab country in the Middle East. It has the largest population of over 80 million people, 90% of which are Muslims. 9% Coptic Christian, and the other 1% Christian, or other Christian. It is the most populous Arab country. They're in the second most populous country on the African continent. Mostly all of Egypt's population live in Cairo and Alexandria, the two largest cities there. And what happens in Egypt and what is unfolding in Egypt right now has direct national security interests for the nation of Israel and also, more specifically, for the United States of America. And so for the past 12 days, 13 days as of today, we've watched the unfolding of events and listened to the, the political pundits on TV and read the varying commentaries that give us the idea that it is democracy that is on the move. But lurking beneath all of that, and lurking beneath the, the push for Mubarak's ouster, the, the president of Egypt, 
is being fueled by Islamic radicalism. Islamic radicalism seeks to inject the poison into this ensuing chaos with the singular purpose of establishing an Islamic caliphate or an Islamic radical state, a militant state that seeks to initiate a holy war against Israel and the Western world. These radicals seek to destroy, destroy and dismantle the, the government of Egypt so that it can bring about its own Islamic state. We've been there. We've done that. We've seen the consequences of it. The year 1979. The Shah of Iran was kicked out of Iran. What began as a popular uprising through the educated and the intellectual was very quickly co-opted by Islamic radicals who sought to impose upon the Iranian people this militant form of Islamic revolution. And everything that we're experiencing now in our world today goes back to 1979 when they set up their, their theocracy that Islam would rule and Allah's will would be done. The fact that Iran is now pursuing a nuclear weapon, threatening to destroy Israel, threatening to send nuclear weapons into Western Europe with the intent of sending it to the eastern coast of the United States of America, all began because what began as a popular uprising was soon hijacked by Islamic radicals who want to destroy Israel and to destroy Western world. Now, let's pause for just a moment. Because you see, I believe that an informed intercessor is an effective intercessor. And what we see happening in the world and the Middle East particularly is nothing more than spiritual warfare. Good against evil. Light against darkness. Righteousness against unrighteousness. This is not just a geopolitical thing. This is spiritual warfare at its most intense level. And ladies and gentlemen, we must intercede over what's taking place in the Middle East today. Now, if you look at Egypt for just a moment, there are those who will tell us that this is, this is a desire to, to free the oppression of Mubarak's regime for the past 30 years. And they're wanting freedom and liberty and justice for all. And that might be the intent of the majority of the people. But positioning themselves very skillfully and very clearly is this radical force of a group called the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood was formed in 1928 and they received their training um, from Nazism. The same hatred and vile hatred that the, the Nazis had for the Jews are the same hatred that the Muslim Brotherhood has for the Jews and the state of Israel today and the Jewish people. And they seek to bring destruction to the nation of Israel. This Muslim Brotherhood has connections to Al-Qaeda, to Hamas, to Hezbollah. It has connections to Osama bin Laden and the second in charge, a man by the name of Zwahahiri, who was Osama bin Laden's second in charge and the, the brain power behind 9-11 and the attacks on the Pentagon. The Muslim Brotherhood is associated and affiliated with many other global terrorist operations in the world today, and they are probably behind the sleeper cells of terrorists that are right here in the United States of America. That at the moment in which they say it, the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, Ahmadinejad in Iran will unleash that terrorist cell to bring destruction to the major cities in America. We need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that in spite of what the press is telling us, that the Muslim Brotherhood is a moderate group, I've come to tell you that they are an, a, a radical Islamic jihadist group that is seeking the upheaval of the present government in Egypt so that they can establish this Islamic revolution in Egypt to destroy Israel. I want us to realize what we're up against because all of this 
is moving us towards the prophetic events in which Jesus Christ will come to destroy the forces of evil that are against the people of God. Now to put this into perspective, I want us to realize that Israel is a very small nation. If you will notice the screens, you will realize that Israel is only about 220 miles long. You will see it in that darker yellow. From the north to the bottom part of the south is about 220 miles long. Its width at its most narrow point is six miles wide. You will see the lighter yellow, that's the West Bank. It's not under the control of Israel. It is under control of another group. You will see at the most narrow point that it's six miles wide. Israel is a very small nation. And it's a nation that has been given to the Jewish people by Almighty God. There are about seven and a half million people in Israel. 5,750,000 are Jewish, the rest are Arabs. I want you to realize that five and three quarter million Jewish people are gathered together in a very small nation that can fit inside of Lake Michigan. I want you to realize it's a very small nation. And while it's a nation that has been given to the Jewish people by Almighty God, it's embedded in a very large Arab world. This next slide will give you that kind of perspective. If you will take a look, it will be very hard for you to identify the nation of Israel. Go ahead, Chuck. You can see it probably from where you are sitting had I not put the arrow there. It's that light orange on the edge of the Mediterranean See, very small and surrounded by a mass of Arab nations, Muslim nations, that are hostile for the most part to the nation of Israel. If you will also notice that the population of this Arab world is 600 million. Now, if you will look at this broad picture here, you will see that the nation of Israel is colored in blue. Every other nation all around it are Arab nations, and many of them populated by the Muslim or the Islamic religion. The entire population of that broader Arab world is 600 million Arabs, with the overwhelming percentage of them Muslim. Five and, a, five and three quarter million Jewish people Surrounded by 600 million Arabs. If you will just look at that broader picture of that Arab world for just a moment. If Egypt falls into radical Islamic hands, I want you to see the picture that is surrounding Israel. The book of Ezekiel and the book of Daniel speak about four kings as it speaks about end time events. It speaks about the kings of the north, which is the king of Russia or the nation of Russia. It speaks about the, the kings of the east, which is a king of China that will come in to destroy or try to destroy the nation of Israel. It speaks about the kings of the west, which speaks about America and Western Europe, those who stay in alignment. And then it speaks about the, the king of the south, which speaks about Egypt and North Africa. What happens there as Ezekiel sees these events unfolding in terms of prophetic events, the, the kings of the north and the kings of the south will come against Israel, at which point they will try to destroy Israel, but Israel will be protected by Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Messiah of the Jewish people. I share that for us to understand that what we see happening and unfolding in these prophetic events is that the pieces are coming into place for the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. We will talk more about that in the next three weeks. I think you're going to be captivated by what the Bible says is going to happen in the years to come. Understand this, that Israel is like no other nation on the planet earth. 
Israel is the only nation that was created by a sovereign act of Almighty God who entered into an eternal covenant, blood covenant, with Abraham 3,500 years ago. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1 says this, The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land that I will show you. He says, I want you to leave everything that is familiar. Everything that you know, all of your relationships, I want you to uproot your family and go to a nation that I'm going to give you. It will be a blood covenant that I will establish with you and the children of Israel forever. Now understand, seven times God spoke to Abraham saying and swearing this covenant that he was going to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. God gave one promise to Isaac and said, I'm giving you a land that's flowing with milk and honey and will be to you and to your children and to your children's children. And three times God said to Jacob that there is a land that I'm going to give you. Eleven times the sovereign God of the universe, the one who spoke the worlds into existence, said to Israel, I am giving you a land that shall be forever yours. And it shall become the dwelling place for my covenant children. Genesis chapter 17 and verses 7 and 8. The Lord says, I will establish a covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. To be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And the whole land of Canaan where you are now an alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you. And I will be their God. God promised the land, the geographical land of Israel to the children of Israel forever. Now what you saw there in that small slice of Israel is just a portion of what God gave to Abraham and to the children of children, the children of Israel. In fact, on the northern side, the land that God gave to the children of Israel goes above and beyond Syria. And in the south, it goes down into part of the, the Sinai and then into a part of Saudi Arabia. The biblical land of Israel is so much larger than the current nation of Israel right now. There will come a time where Jesus Christ will set foot upon planet earth, that he will give all of that land back to the children of Israel where they can have their play and they can have their rightful land for that time. God will be faithful to fulfill his promise. I want us to realize, ladies and gentlemen, that these are very serious times that we're living in. I shared with you that an informed intercessor is an effective intercessor. What is happening is that there is a tremendous work of evil to try to cause the government of Egypt to collapse and to transform it into a jihadist state that can go against the nation of Israel and ultimately to establish an Islamic revolution across the entire planet. Now, you see that small slice up there, Chuck, if you just show that right there again, what you've got on the screen. That nation of Israel, the promise of God, comes with a supernatural curse inherent to it. Anyone that tries to defile the land of Israel and to bring harm to the children of Israel will experience the judgment and wrath of God. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 15 says, As you have done to Israel, it shall be done to you. Your, your reprisal shall return upon your head. Obadiah says, In the manner in which you treat Israel, you also will treat Israel. If you bless Israel, I will bless you. The fulfillment of Genesis chapter 3, chapter 12 and verse 3. He says, if you curse Israel, I will curse you. That's why it's so important that America stand with Israel. That's why it's so important for us to have a government and an administration that will be a strong advocate for Israel. Because when America blesses Israel, God blesses America. When America curses Israel, God curses America. A few years ago, in fact, about a year and a half ago, I read a fascinating book called As You Do Unto Israel, So Shall It Be Done Unto You. 
The whole premise of that book was a historical look at America and that when America took positions that were supportive and in strong advocacy of Israel, we saw the blessings of God flow upon Israel. But when America took positions that were adversarial to Israel, we saw historically the judgment and curses of God upon, our, upon this land. It's vitally important that America always stand with God's chosen people. That America will always be a strong advocate for, America, for Israel. Because as we do that, we will open up ourselves to the blessing of Almighty God. Can I tell you, Joel chapter 3 says this. I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat is the valley of judgment. It's the valley of Jezreel where God is going to pour out his ultimate wrath upon those that have rejected him in the battle of Armageddon. He says, there I will enter into judgment against them concerning my inheritance, my people Israel. For they scattered my people among the nations and divided my land. Joel says that in the last days, the righteous wrath of God will be vented upon all of those who have ever done any harm to the children of Israel. I share all of that with us. Because, beloved family, we are living in the end of the age. We are seeing biblical prophecy fulfilled before our very eyes. You can look around and you feel it. You look around, you see it. You see the quaking and the shaking of the nations. You see the governments of this world in a quandary. You see the economic global situation teetering on collapse because of debt and all of the financial crises we find ourselves in. We are living on the precipice of the collapse of the American dollar. Everything is pointing us towards a one world government in which all of the confusion will usher in the coming of the Antichrist who who will promise peace, but ultimately he will bring death and destruction. The signs of the times are all around us. Matthew 24, Jesus said, if you want to understand the times, cast your gaze upon one area, Israel. He says in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 32, he says, now learn this lesson from the fig tree. Now the fig tree in the Old Testament is a prophetic symbol of the nation of Israel. It's a prophetic symbol of the nation of Israel. Jesus said in Matthew 24, he says, if you want to understand the signs of the times, keep your eye on the fig tree or keep your eye on Israel. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that the summer is near. Even so, when you see all of these things happen, you know that the end is near. It's right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things happen. Now, what is Jesus talking about? Jesus said that if you will watch Israel and the rebirthing of Israel, then you know that the time for the coming of the Son of Man is near. In fact, he says, the generation that sees the supernatural rebirthing of Israel as a sovereign nation state will be the generation that will see the return of the Son of God. On May 14, 1948, under the sovereign, supernatural, miraculous hand of God, the nation of Israel was reestablished as a nation state for the Jewish people. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living as the last generation, perhaps the terminal generation, for the coming of the Son of Man. The next few, few weeks, I hope to prove that to us as we unfold Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 and see what God is doing in our world today. Can I tell you, dear one, God is moving mightily in our face, on the face of this globe, and we need to watch and know the signs of the times. These are interesting times that we're living in. So what you see happening in Egypt, I want you to look on the deeper level. 
Do you know in that broader Arab world, that yellow, the slide that had the yellow Arab nations all around it? Just recently, there are 10 Arab nations that are in some kind of unrest and upheaval. Some kind of agitation that is going on. You see, the goal of radical Islam is to create nation states where Islamic rule or Allah's rule be done. It's called the caliphate. And it's which theocratic rule or Sharia law is imposed upon those nations. And that the, the Islamic will be superimposed upon every nation. Islam seeks for global domination, even in America. Western Europe for the most part, is already lost. France and Germany have a strong Islamic or Muslim influence, and it's growing every year. One noted foreign correspondent says, in 10 to 15 years, England will be primarily dominated by an Islamic influence. Islam is on the move. Radical Islam is on the move. So I share all of this to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, these are momentous times that we're living in. The Bible challenges us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It calls us as the, the body of Christ to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Israel finds itself in a terrible, terrible situation. What radical jihadism seeks to do in Israel, it seeks to do in America. It seeks to impose its will upon these United States of America. What's happening in the Middle East has direct impact on what's happening here in America and what will happen in America. The template of what Islam is doing in Western Europe is the template in which it wants to do in America. Radical Islam has come with a 100-year plan on how it can dominate the world. And it's waiting for Western civilization to implode. And then it will imprint the theocratic rule of Allah upon the globe. That's not going to happen because of what the, the prophecy of the scriptures teach us and tell us. But their mission is global and world dominion. Solid rock, hear me. An informed intercessor is an effective intercessor. It's vitally important that we bathe that situation in prayer in the Middle East. I'm going to ask you to do three things for me. Now I know this is heavy. Someone said to me afterwards, says it's kind of scary what's happening. And I said, you know, for the child of God, we know how it ends. <laughs> for the child of God, we know how it ends. So it really ought not to be scary for us who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we trust him. But the Bible says in Matthew 24, Jesus said, when you see all of these things happening, when you see wars and rumors of wars and nations against nations and you see pestilence and famines and you see the rapid exponential increase of knowledge upon the face of the earth and transportation where men and women can go to and fro. Jesus said, when you see all of these things happen, know that the coming of the Son of Man is near. Ladies and gentlemen, it's good news for those of us who love our Lord. It's good news. And you'll see it in the next three weeks. But there are three things that I want us to, to keep in mind in the interim. One is we find ourselves engaged, to be honest with you, in a climactic spiritual conflict between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. Light against darkness, good against evil, righteousness against unrighteousness. I'm going to ask you to pray that rational, moderate forces will prevail in Egypt. We must pray that the confusion and the upheaval and the unrest will be vanquished. The Bible says that the enemy thrives in chaos and confusion. 
The word of the Lord says that God's not the author of confusion. If God's not the author of confusion, then solid rock, who is? Satan. And wherever there is confusion, Satan is at work. So we pray that rational and moderate minds will prevail in Egypt. And that there would be wisdom. And that God would raise up the right leadership for that nation. We bind the spirit of confusion and take authority over the radical forces of Islam. Secondly, I'm going to ask that you pray for the wisdom of God for our president and his cabinet. Really, regardless of who our president is, this is a foreign policy debacle. It is a complex situation that demands great wisdom, the wisdom of Solomon. And we need to pray for our president that God would give him wisdom to negotiate all of the hurdles that he's got to walk through. Our present administration has also sent out some uncertain signals that has really caused alarm in, in Israel and it could be perceived as empowering the Muslim Brotherhood. Let's pray that God will help us to have a consistent, clear, coherent foreign policy. Pray for our president and our government as they, as they walk through this. But third, I'm going to ask you to pray for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his cabinet. Five and three quarter million Jews in a sea of an Arab population of 600 million people. A small, tiny slice of a nation called Israel that can fit in Lake Michigan in the midst of the mass of nation countries that are committed for the destruction of Israel and the imposition of an Islamic caliphate. We need to pray for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. You know and the world has heard and listened to what... Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran, has said in the United Nations in New York when it said that Israel must be removed like a tumorous, cancerous tumor from the face of the earth. And when he swears, now here is the head of a state that is moving rapidly towards nuclear weaponry, said that Israel should be wiped off the face of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, these are serious times. We've been there. We've done that. We've got the t-shirt. 1939, when Hitler said in his final solution that they were going to wipe out the Jewish people. And lo and behold, the world stood by as a demonic leader of the Third Reich incinerated and murdered six million Jewish people. And because of World War II, another 50 million perished. Ladies and gentlemen, these are perilous times that we're living in. This past week, and family confessedly, February was not the month that I had themed to do on prophecy. It was not where I was going in terms of our messages. I was going to go in a different direction on marriage and family. But what's happening in our world today is I want us to be aware of it. But last week, while at the Christians United for Israel Leadership Summit, there was an individual who is a soldier. In fact, he's a colonel in the, the Israeli Defense Force. He said, he's a current colonel and oversees a large part of Israel and its protection. He said that Israel, the nation of Israel, and the government of Israel sees Iran as an existential threat to its survival. And Israel is a nation that cannot endure many nuclear weapons. In fact, it is said that one nuclear bomb would destroy Israel from the face of the earth because it's so small. This colonel said that the policy of the Israeli government and the defense forces is that if something is not done to stop Iran from possessing and acquiring a nuclear weapon, 
It is the stated policy of the state of Israel that it will intervene in a preemptive military strike. I'm telling you, we are living on the edge. We are living on the edge of the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. It's closer than we think. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel will not stand by idly and allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. It will do a preemptive military strike. And ladies and gentlemen, Israel is committed to the survival of its people. And also, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is also committed to Israel's survival. And the moment that the nations of the world move against Israel, we will see the Israel, the eastern sky split, and the Son of God come in the battle of Armageddon to destroy the forces of darkness. And so shall we forever be in the presence of Almighty God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, as you watch events unfold, it's much more than geopolitical. It is biblical prophecy being fulfilled in your very sight. I tell you this to make you an informed intercessor so that you can become an effective intercessor as we pray. God is on the move. The kingdom of God will exact its perfect will upon this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, and for those of us who know him as our Savior and Lord, we win. There are great days ahead for us. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask you for just a moment to bow your heads and close your eyes.